Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at everything you need to know about plate carriers and body armor. In this video, I'm going to be going over a bunch of things that I think are important before purchasing your own plate carrier and body armor. I'm going to try to go over as many things as possible and give you guys as many tips as I can. Now, this is a video that I wish I would have had when I first got into getting plate carriers and body armor because when I first got into it, I bought a really cheap plate carrier just thinking that I knew what I was doing and I regretted it because it wasn't very good. So I bought a little bit more expensive one, but still cheap. And I ended up getting rid of that one and getting another one and so on and so forth until I started finding good stuff that I actually really liked and found out that really worked. And started listening to uh, some other people. So hopefully this video will be able to help those that either already made that mistake or save you from making that mistake here in a little bit. Now disclaimer before we start, I am no professional or expert when it comes to body armor or plate carriers. This is just from my personal experience, the things that I have found. I'm not a military guy, I've not been in combat, so I have not worn these in combat in any situations like that. This is just coming from the thoughts and things that I have personally found. So take it for what it is. I don't want you to think that, oh hey, this guy knows what he's talking about because he's done this, this, or this there's a lot of really good information on youtube from guys that have worn this kind of stuff in combat and know a little bit different on that aspect but this is just from my point of view the things that i have found as being a civilian wearing this and using this and uh, basically having these protect myself and my family so take it for what it is and uh, we'll get right into the video so currently I'm testing three different plate carriers. Uh, this is one from HRT. I really like this one. This one's got a ton of really cool features, which we'll go over here in a little bit. And then I've got this one from Ace Link. This is a Skeletac one. It's a really lightweight carrier, as you can see, because it's got these holes basically. And then this is also an Ace Link one as well. This is kind of more of a basic carrier. And I've been testing all three of these. I also have a couple other ones. I've got this one here from AR500, I believe I got. That was one of my first ones that I got that isn't really the best but i want to go over it. and then i have another one in my truck but my dad has my truck right now so i don't have that one here for filming um, but that one's another one that i kind of wish i would have never bought but it's a lot kind of like this style but this one has a lot nicer features than that one did so let's just dive right into this so one question that gets asked a lot is accessories how do you mount them uh, people have questions about placards things like that mag pouches what to use what not to use and the first thing that i'm gonna say is every plate carrier as you can see from these ones that i'll have set up everyone is different. They all have their own different style and how they're set up. And that's going to be completely personal preference. I know that's kind of a cop out you know, answer, but it's true. Anything you want and what you see as your mission set or what you're going to be using this for, whether that be law enforcement, civilian use, military, you need to know what you need and what you're going to be using and what you want to personally use. Are you going to go for lightweight because you think that I'd rather be fast than be able to have a bunch of gear and be slow and easy target? Or do you think, oh, I want to be able to have enough gear on this thing front and back. So so if something happens, um, I get stuck back in the woods for a day, I have enough stuff to survive. So those are the things that you're gonna have to ask your own questions and answer for yourself so you know exactly what you wanna get. Me personally, what I did is I set up a couple of different carriers. This is kind of my lightweight one. If I really wanna do something quick, go in, get out and not plan on being anywhere long. This is kind of my long time, you know, if I'm gonna be out for a while, plan on being out in the woods for a long period of time, or I might have a couple days stay, this is what I'm gonna go with. So I have a couple of different things set up. So with your front plates, your mag carriers and things like that with your attachments. So the first thing you're gonna be looking at that's kind of your normal and your average right now and was always kind of the, the go-to is just your Molly, which I'm gonna turn this around so you can see. There's nothing on the back of this one. This is just gonna be your normal Molly ones. This is kind of what the normal, cheaper, everything's gonna be really generated towards because that's really what all the accessories have. So you just have your Molly. If you don't know a ton about Molly, I don't wanna go too deep into it, but you basically just weave it in and out of this and it attaches to it. So if you if you have questions about Molly, not sure what it is, I'm sure there's other YouTube videos on, it gives you a really detailed view on what Molly is. But basically it's just an attachment system that most carriers have. It's a really good, useful attachment system. It's kind of annoying to attach, but it does work and obviously it's, it's been working for years because that's what you know military and law enforcement has been using for a long time. So this is what normally you're gonna have. So you can just buy whatever attachment. Say you want to buy one mag carrier, you can attach it right there, molly it on, and it'll be right there. You can put it wherever you want where the molly is. Or you can do, I want three, where this one, I have three of them on here. So I have three mag carriers, and each one is separate by itself, and they attach to the molly wherever I want. If I want this one to be a little bit higher, I just go up one molly segment, and I can attach it a little bit higher. And for some of you guys that are a little bit more in-depth that know about molly and know about certain things, I'm going to get more detailed into this, but I want to make sure I'm trying to cover this for everybody, maybe somebody that doesn't know much about the molly. I want this video to be an all-around basis for anybody 
that is just getting into it or knows a little bit or knows a lot, but wants some questions answered. So for right now, we're just gonna go over the simple things. Later down the video, we're gonna go over more detail on other things like that. So bear with me. Uh, so the Molly is very simple. You just attach it where you want it. So this one just has some very simple mag pouches, nothing crazy to it. So the next thing that you can choose is the placard system, which I personally think is a far superior system just because of the ease of use and the fact that you can rotate things very easily. So, so I'll explain that to you real quick. So first you're gonna have these two clips, both this one and this one have the placard system. As you can see, has these clips here. And then what you're gonna be able to do, and which is really cool, is you can just take these clips off like that. And then you can just pull this down and it just Velcros on. So basically it has Velcro right there in the back and then you've got your clips right here and right here. So you can just slap it on, clip it on, and you can basically rotate whatever kind of placard you want on this depending on what you're doing. So you can really just buy one plate carrier and just rotate placard. So if I want something with more gear and more stuff, I can use this one. But if I just want lightweight, I can switch to this one. So I can just slap this one on and have a little bit lightweight setup. So that's the placard system. It's not really new, but I feel like that I get a lot of questions on because people are kind of confused when I talk about the placard and how you can switch it. Uh, people really aren't sure exactly how it works. So as simple as taking those things off, pull it down, put a new one on. And it also confused me when I first started getting into it because I just thought Molly was the only option. I didn't realize there was another option. So this one also has a placard system. So I'm gonna pull this one completely off so you can see exactly what it looks like without. So basically there it is. You've got your Velcro right there. And then I can honestly take this placard and slap it on this one as well, clip it in, and then I can be fine. But you don't have to if you don't want to, if you wanna keep it all the same color. But it's kind of cool to know that other placards from other companies can work on other people's plate carriers. So you're not stuck with just one. So if I want to, uh, I don't really need mags. I really just want a plate carrier and be really lightweight. I can just take this off, put my mag somewhere and run this only. Or if I'm like, you know what? I really want my mags back on. You can grab them on your backpack or your truck, slap it back on, clip them on and you're good to go. So hopefully that makes sense. It is a really big benefit. If you're gonna be getting a plate carrier and you're choosing between something with placard and Molly, and I'm sure the placard's gonna be more expensive, definitely choose this. I just think that that's a really big benefit being able to switch. Right now you might be like, oh, I'm just gonna run three mags and I'm gonna be good. I'm never gonna run anything else. I'm fine. But if you ever do change your mind, all you have to do is spend $50 on this instead of spending $200 on a whole new plate carrier. So. I think it's definitely a benefit and there's perks to uh, going that route. And I don't really see any downfalls to going that route other than I can't maybe adjust these high or low or something like that. It has to stay right here in the front, which that's kind of where you want it anyway. Uh, another thing that you can do here is have these little mag or pouches. So things that I put in these are like multi-tool flashlight. I've got a knife in this one and a like glass breaker. I haven't finished installing everything in this one. So I'm gonna have like paracord, uh, fire starters, little things like that. And then obviously in the back, I have two pull away medical pouches. Medical is very important to have. So it's just good to have little things like that. This one also behind the placard, which is cool. So you pull the placard away. And then I also have this separate pouch that also just Velcros in. This one's for a tourniquet. So I can put my tourniquet right there, which I usually run, but I had it in another video and I didn't put it back. And then I also have a mag slash a radio holder on this side. So those are other little accessories you can buy just to have a little extensions to it. Cause I don't wanna, I don't really like putting too much up here. I like kind of keeping this free. You can put some things in here. You can Velcro some things on that or you can Molly as well up here on either of these. So there are a lot of different accessories you can do. So again, when it comes to what you want on yours, that's all gonna be personal preference. Do you want just one mag? Do you want three mags? Me personally, I wanna have three mags on it. It can fit on there. So why wouldn't I want 90 rounds opposed to 30 rounds with me? I think that's important. This one has two pistol mags here. This one has two pistol mags there. And this one has two in the front. I'm probably gonna get two more here. I just haven't purchased those ones yet. And this one has three. Uh, the biggest benefit with these tacos is these can fit any mag. So I can do AR, AK, uh, I can do flashlight. Uh, Glock, I can do CZ Scorpion. So tons of different options with those tacos. Those are really, really nice high speed gear. Pouches are expensive, but they are really nice. I definitely recommend those if you're looking for something like a buy once, cry once and never have to buy anything again. So we went over the Molly, we went over the placard system. Uh, let's go over the straps. Something you wanna look into uh, is either what you want a quick detach system where you can pull off uh, here and then you could do one that doesn't have anything like that where you can't pull. And this one here has a quick pull. So you can just basically pull this and this whole thing drops. So you can do a couple different styles depending on what you want. I like this one because it's just one click and you're good and you can swim your way out of it. The benefit to that is the fact if 
you happen to be in water, you fall into water, you wreck your vehicle in water, or you're just doing something in water, uh, this is gonna weigh you down and you're not gonna be able to move. And the chances of you being able to unclip everything and pull over your head while you're panicking are pretty low. So with these, these ones you can literally just pull, pull, and it falls off, or you can pull the bottom ones and they fall off. This one you can just pull out and swim out of it. Another benefit is just actually putting it on. It's easier. You don't have to like try to put your head through it and everything. You can just clip that clip it around and put it back on. So it's just a little bit easier to put on and off, but those are two big benefits. There might be other reasons for this. I don't know those reasons, but those are the two reasons I know. So for the straps here, your shoulder straps, uh, this is actually really important. Some people don't even think about this, but this is a super important feature when you're talking about body armor. So you've got a lot of different styles. So this one's really minimalist. This one's kind of thick and bulky. It's got a lot going on. This one's also pretty thick. And then this one is a little bit thinner. So one thing you're going to want to look at is you want to have a little bit of padding because wearing this and having that weight of the plates on you, it's going to really dig into your shoulder. So having something with a little bit of padding is great. You don't want something where it's just like a thin strap like this and there's some that have that it's just a strap they want to think you know it's, it's minimalist but it really gets uncomfortable and digs into your shoulder so you want to have some kind of padding to disperse that weight a little bit and give you a little bit of comfort now there's a really fine line though between getting padding and too much padding because if you go too much you're going to be affecting your shouldering you're going to be affecting other things like that anything you do with that shoulder you're going to have so much padding there that when you go to shoulder your rifle it's not going to sit on your shoulder it's going to sit either half on the padding or all on the padding or a weird mixture of both. So getting something with thinner padding is really important. This one is really good. This one is good because either, even if you do touch it, it's still very thin. Uh, this one's a little bit too thick for my liking. And this one I haven't had issues with. When I first seen it, I thought that's gonna be really thick and have problems. Personally, I didn't have an issue with it, but I think it's because when I'm wearing it, it almost shifts over a little bit. So that one moves a little bit more, but you don't want to go too thick. So definitely keep an eye on that. Now, a couple key features, not all of them to have, but the HRT does. There is a uh, two panels right here and there's a channel or a tunnel right here in the middle. And basically what they did with that is they gave you a little bit of airflow. So when you're wearing this, it's obviously pressed against you. It's gonna be hot, you're gonna sweat. But with this, there's just a little bit of space that it's not laying against you that it gives you so airflow can get through. Obviously it's not gonna be like AC or anything and be cooled you down, but it definitely does get an airflow through. I wore this the other day for a couple hours, it was 84 degrees and obviously I was sweating, but it was nice to have that airflow. So even if you anything, you can look down and blow down and kind of get that hot air out. If you've ever wear plate carry you know exactly what I'm, I'm talking about it's just super super hot and uncomfortable in there that's just one way they kind of look to mitigate that a little bit another little feature that you want to look for with shoulder straps is these here these are for either radio cable management or water management if you have a water pack on the back you can have your water management that is important because if you're going to be doing longer stuff and you want to have water with you it is good to have these I think almost every single one of them have them for the most part as far as I know uh, this one doesn't for the most part, most of them have that, but it is just something, a nice little feature. It's not a make or break, I don't think, in my mind, unless you're just getting one plate carrier for everything, and I think it definitely is something you wanna look into, but it's definitely a nice little thing to have if you're gonna be water, wearing a water pack. Now for the back, a lot of them have these pull tabs. That's just so somebody can drag you. If you're down, they can pull you easily. This one doesn't have it. Uh, this one does. So they all, for the most part, have those pull tabs. This is a really minimalist one, as you can tell, because it's just a, a really thin piece of plastic trying to keep it as lightweight as possible. But for the most part, they'll have this pull tab. That's a little benefit, just because if you go down, you want somebody to pull and uh, be able to carry you. Now, backing on these are different. This one, like I showed you before, it's kind of hard to carry these things around, is just Molly. So again, you can add whatever you want. You can add medical pouch, a big giant pouch. You can add nothing and, and you can put it anywhere you want. So that's gonna be personal preference. With these two here, which is really cool, is they have this zipper here in the back. So it comes with this little back panel. It does have laser cut molly, so you can put your molly on there if you want to. But you take this zipper and you zip this off and you can take this whole back panel off and run nothing. You can run molly or you can zip this on and have medical and things like that. Or you can have like, Say I have a medical pouch on this one, unzip it, take another one, zip it back on, and you can run different things. Say you want a helmet pouch or different things like that. So you can really have a personal preference with this being able to change depending on what kind of situation that you're gonna be in. So this one has the same style, but this one's a little bit better in my mind.
behind just for the fact that it has it separated. So that one has one long zipper. This one has two small zippers. So what's cool about it is I actually unzipped this one already is you have two separate ones. So I can have this top one and the bottom one different. So say I always want to run medical, which is something that I always do want to run. So I always want to keep these ones on, but I just want to switch this out. Maybe I want a different kind of pouch. I can just unzip this top one, take the top one off, take another pouch, put it on top and zip that one on and never have to move my medical or have two medical or three medical, depending how many back panels I have. So that's a really big benefit. Um, speaking of medical, I think that's a huge, very important thing to have on your plate carrier. Some people think that, oh, you know, it's a little bit more weight. Maybe I don't want to. It's expensive to go medical supplies. So important. Have gauze, wraps, tourniquet, things like that. Be able to stop a bleed, be able to do quick medical. Obviously, most of you aren't gonna be able to do a ton of medical if you don't have a lot of medical knowledge. I plan on keeping like a saline bag, some IV supplies in here. So if you're losing fluid, you can get an IV. It depends on your training level though. If you're not trained on the things, obviously your uh, setup might be a little bit different, but that's just kind of what I plan on running back here. So I have all my medical stuff right here in the back. And uh, these pull tabs are pretty cool because you can literally just take that and pull straight out and then you have your medical. So I always plan on having one side as always just me. No one touches it just from my person and then the other one is for hey Jimmy's down take my medical pack on the right side they pull and go and they have some medical supplies this one also has a medical pack on the back that you can get access to and have all your medical supplies so definitely an important thing to have on your plate carrier so again this back part completely up to you what you want to put on but I just want to show you the differences between the molly the zippers and the double zippers so cool features on both of them there might be some other stuff out there but those are the ones that I've had experience with so those are kind of the key features with the actual plate carrier itself. Obviously you're gonna wanna look at like sizing. There's the uh, different size plates, which we'll go over here in a little bit. I got a bunch of different plates sitting here that we're gonna go over. This one has level four ceramic and polyethylene plates in it. This one has level three polyethylenes. This one has level three steel, so they're like hard. And then this one has level three plus polyethylene and ceramic plates. So it does get expensive. That is one of the biggest downfalls. I think that plate carrier is a very, very important thing to get, especially nowadays and the things going on. Uh, if you don't have your rifle and pistol set up and the things that you really, really need like ammo, guns, I don't think this should be the first thing you purchase, but I definitely think this should be a close second, third, maybe fourth thing that you should get because having the protection of body armor uh, in some kind of situation like that that you might be getting shot at is huge. So it's not a must. I don't think that the person with body armor versus the person without, because there's benefits without having it because you're a lot more agile. You can move quicker. You can do a lot more uh, without body armor, but the protection is huge. So I definitely recommend getting something like this. Just don't make sure, don't make it a priority over your primary rifle. Don't be like, okay, I can buy the, I can, I can buy a sight mark and put it on my gun or I can buy an EOTech or I can buy a plate carrier and armor get the good stuff for your gun, make sure your gun's set up. Body armor is gonna do nothing for you if you're getting shot at and you can't accurately shoot somebody because you don't have your rifle set up properly and have the good equipment that you need. So make sure your guns are set up, you have enough ammo and those things are squared away and then look into purchasing these and getting something that's quality and good and that's gonna be worth your money. So hopefully that helped you. If you have any other questions about plate carriers, accessories, and things like that that I didn't touch on, please shoot me a comment. I will try to get you that information as soon as possible. If I get enough questions, maybe I'll do another video, but I will definitely answer your questions and try to give you the right answer. If I can't, I will direct you towards somebody that can. So now I wanna go over body armor real quick. I'm not gonna do super in depth because uh, this can go on forever. So there's a lot of different plates, body armor levels that you can get. This is a three and this is a level four. So what is the difference and how do you tell? They look pretty much identical. Uh, basically there's the things in the back and uh, when you purchase it, you'll be able to pick. Uh, this one's significantly lighter and this one definitely has some weight to it. This one is, is like nothing. Uh, this is just polyethylene. This has ceramic and polyethylene in it. Uh, I have a video on me testing these polyethylenes. I'll link up here if you wanna see it. It's a really cool video. This is literally just plastic, little tiny thin pieces of plastic all stacked together and squished together and compressed and it stops bullets. It's pretty crazy how it works. So definitely recommend looking at that video. This one has a ceramic plate and then it has the polyethylene so it's a little higher rated. So there's a, a chart here I'll show you that kind of gives you an idea on what these all stop. This is like your 5.56, 7.62. If you got the uh, three plus, which is in this one that's a little bit heavier that has a ceramic plate in it, it stops your a little bit higher rounds. And then this four stops, I believe it's it's rated up to a 30 out six. I believe, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's a 30 out six. And uh, that's pretty impressive what all these can stop. I'm actually gonna be doing a video on this one soon, shooting it and testing it. And then you have your 
hard plate. Uh, this is gonna be a steel plate. This is a level three plus, so you're gonna be able to stop those higher rifle rounds, which is nice. You definitely want to have something uh, that can stop rifle rounds. You don't wanna go soft armor, in my mind, just because I would rather have something like this that can stop at least rifle rounds or the fours or three pluses. Now, what you can see between these two is this one is super, super thin. This one's pretty thick. What you can't see in video is weight. This is very, very heavy. This is not. This is, I think, three pounds. This is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely bigger than three pounds. Very heavy, especially when you have two of them. One thing that I noticed when I ran this on this carrier with nothing on it, it is just the same weight as wearing this fully loaded mags and carrier. So these are significantly heavier and that is gonna be a downfall. This can stop a lot because it's a steel plate and you're not gonna have some of the downfalls as this, but that is something to look into is the weight. It definitely does make a difference. Now, something to look into as well is storing this in your vehicle. Some of you like to carry plate, or plates or body armor in your vehicle. I'm one of those people. I also carry it in my vehicle because I think it's important to have. I used to carry polyethylenes until I found out that uh, heat and polyethylenes don't really mix that well. If you leave this in a hot place for two months or a week or two weeks for a long period of time, the plastic, it might get a little bit soft and might not be rated nearly as high. So I leave steel plates in my vehicle and polyethylene in the house. And if I have to go anywhere, I'm taking these. Uh, that's not to say that if you're going out for two days and you're in the sun, it's gonna weaken your body armor and it's not gonna work. That's not the case. It's just if you're leaving it in a vehicle and it's 90 degrees out for three weeks, it's probably gonna weaken a little bit just because of what it's made out of. So definitely if you're leaving it in your vehicle, I always keep steel plates in my vehicle. And then these are at the house ready to go. Next thing I wanna mention is gonna be size. As you can tell, there's two different sizes. This one is gonna be your 11 by 14. This one's gonna be your 10 by 12. So if you're a smaller person like me, I'm 5'10 and I'm not a huge big guy. So this plate works perfectly for me. It covers what I need it to and I still have movement. I could run this if I want to. It's gonna cover a lot more, but it's gonna limit my movement a little bit and I don't like that. So if you're a bigger guy, weight wise, thickness wise, you might wanna look into the 11 14s. I recommend, finding someone that has them or going to a shop that has these and looking for yourself because there is a pretty significant difference between these two and it is going to make a difference. So again, there's a ton I could talk about with body armor. I just want to give you guys a really quick down low of that. I think the main body armor I would go with is something light like polyethylene. I absolutely love it. The weight difference is huge and I think it matters a ton. So I definitely recommend polyethylenes if you're going to go with body armor. Uh, there's nothing wrong with steel plates other than the fact that they're heavy. So I mean, if you have these and you're like, I can't afford anything else, you're still going to have protection you're just gonna be <laughs> you're gonna tire out a lot quicker than the next person so I will be doing a video review on each of these carriers this carrier will get its own review and this carrier will get its own review here soon once I'm done testing them I haven't tested them long enough to be able to give you guys an accurate idea I'm gonna grab this gun just because I like to have something in my hands and uh, I think it looks sharp uh, if you guys want to get your own or if you guys have any questions anything that I did not mention in this video that you have questions about please ask me down below I would rather be able to answer those questions and help you before you make a purchase and possibly make a bad purchase and waste some money. So that's why I try to make these videos. I try to be able to give you guys information, go off of mistakes that I've made, or even just give you guys some information maybe you haven't thought about. And again, I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living with, with body arm and stuff. So I don't want you to think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pretend I'm somebody I'm not. I just want you to give you a little bit more information and hopefully this helps somebody make a better decision. So if you guys have any questions, shoot me a comment down below. Also, I always answer my DMs on Instagram. If you guys wanna have a little bit further of a conversation, uh, it's easier to do on something like that. So if you guys want to purchase your own, uh, I can't link any of these things because YouTube doesn't like that. But in the description, if you want to help out me and the channel things I do, there is Patreon and there's a link to my website from there. You can go to other websites like Brownells, uh, Cod Defensive, Aero Precision, anything you purchase using my link gives me a small kickback and shows those companies that I'm generating flow, which helps me out a ton. Not, not a big deal. I just appreciate you guys being here, liking, share, and subscribing. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you all. Another company that supports me a ton is Howitzer. Love these guys. They take 5% of proceeds and donate it to charity, which is super cool because they donated over 200,000 to charity last year. And I love their shirts. They're super comfortable and their designs are pretty cool. So if you guys want to check them out, there's a link in the description for them as well.